Okay guys, uh, thank you for tuning in. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. Thanks for checking it out. And if you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. Uh, today's episode, we're going to look at the car a little bit. I got the frame home and stuffed the body on top of it. And we're going to get a little bit more in-depth into my English wheel and see if we can't move some metal with it. So uh, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video, drop a comment below, give me some feedback, do the whole YouTube thing. And uh, yeah, let's get at it. Well, it's late. But I wanted the frame out of my truck today. I got back late last night, slept most of the day. And uh, a couple of the neighbors swung by, helped me move the pallet off the, or the body off the pallet. And helped pull the frame out of the back of the truck with the motor attached. And, uh, yeah, this is pretty awesome. Um, I think... Let's see. See, the body's got to come forward uh, three inches or so. See, the frame rails line up with my rockers pretty good, just the way that I planned. But it's not sitting down all the way because piece of metal I put up there to brace everything is actually hitting my uh, arches there so I'm going to cut that out of the way tomorrow and up here see I'm going to need a hole for that big HEI distributor and I'm actually going to have to notch for the heads a little bit. When I had it all planned out, I was ballparking a small block Chevy and ballparking the motor placement. And it's pretty close to the plans, but I already knew it was going to be hit and miss with the motor. So I'm going to uh, notch out that firewall and uh, slide that body forward. Start putting some, uh, some mounts on it so it's all one piece. But this thing looks mean. Um, that really shows how narrow this car is. I mean, this is almost a tea bucket up at the front. But yeah, so back from the shop on the ground, no one died. And uh, remove that and put that inside a tent beside it so I can put it to work. Well, there may have been a minor miscalculation when I put this brace in that I'm about to remove again. Well, that's okay. It's just metal so I can cut it out and we will put something in that goes over the frame almost level to the back window. So, I'm pretty sure when I filmed my frame video, or programming it, I mentioned that uh, these arches were going to clear this by just a hair. And, uh, yep, yep. Uh, oh, I can see light. We're good. That's a blonde one right there. So we're good. My rear cross member clears the trunk. We're good there. And it's off the ground, so it's set back a little bit. This gives me room to put my bumper brackets and stuff. The trunk lid itself is going to open down there somewhere, so I'll kind of be able to see the back of the frame. But uh, basically, when the rear axle stuffs, the top of the pumpkin can potentially come to right about here. So I think my package tray is going to be right across the bottom of the window. And then roll it down, kind of diagonally down to here. And that'll be my interior. I'll put a side panel in here. And uh, in the middle here, it's going to be notched out for 
a drive shaft tunnel, so it should work pretty good. But, uh, we have just enough room here for body mounts to squeeze between my rockers and my frame. Follows kind of the same line. We'll have to quadruple check all of the measurements. It's hanging up on the frame just a hair there. But uh, oh, I'll turn myself around in here. And transmission poking through. I cut out the rest of the firewall so we could tuck it forward. And uh, passenger side how cylinder head comes through uh, two and a half inches or so. And I think I'm gonna end up cutting a section out of there so I've got room to lift my distributor straight up because pet peeve, not being able to pull the distributor while everything's together is uh, the reason mechanics want to kill engineers. And since I'm both in this case, I gotta make sure I can actually work on it, but um, I think the next step is to kind of get some metal strapped between the body and the frame in well, at least four corners to hold everything straight. I'll cut that piece of metal out of the way so that I can make sure everything's straight. Once I've done that, I can actually start putting the firewall together around the motor. I guess all my plans for bead rolling have changed because everything else has changed. And uh, thankfully there's lots of foot room and I couldn't quite touch the firewall because, uh, well, I'm going to a stick, but that bell housing, well, the bell housing now takes up space. I had planned on putting a gas pedal. So we may go, may go Model T style and put the gas pedal on top of the transmission tunnel. So, taking a step backwards here, trying to show you guys the inner working. I took some stuff apart. Got the upper anvil holder on the ground. I'll show you that in a minute. This is the uh, lower anvil, lower tool post. Now, all I did was thread this all the way out. You can see, you got an Acme threaded nut on the inside. The sides are all polished down. There's a little bit of WD 40 on it, just because I wanted everything to break in good. Now inside, you can see we got four pieces of plastic in on the sides. This piece here extends all the way from this side to this side. This piece goes side to side. These pieces just go plastic to plastic. So if I pull one out, you can see some tooling marks on it. See where it's been rubbing around a little bit, that's okay. All I did is one piece at a time. I put them on the belt sander and held them flat. Smoothed everything out. They weren't perfectly flat. They were a hair oversized. Metal wasn't quite perfect. But that all works. At the bottom, if you can see it there. I'm not sure if that helps now. At the bottom, there's just another piece of this plastic with a hole through it this bolts up against now I could pull the handle off the bottom it's literally a piece of tube with a nut welded onto it um, bolt in there basically as a set screw I'm gonna swap that out for a proper set screw at some point um, I just ground a flat spot onto my shaft but that just sits in there as you can see there's no alignment in this piece at all because all of the alignment is taken care of by the tool post up against the plastic. All this does is push it up and down. I want to put this back together, make sure I got no crap all over it. This is literally just getting forced down and still. And see, because it's acne thread, you can't cross thread it, you can't mess it up. And that's only threaded in a couple of turns. And it's already pretty rock solid. Um, I may still add my jacking screws here, but you can see, like, this is up. Oh. Farther than we could ever use it with the English wheel on. You figure four inches down from center. The wheels down here so I 
built this with some other capabilities in mind. And, uh, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, let's get this threaded down all the way here. Okay, now a few people have already asked, why did I put my wheel in like this? Now in my case, it's because where my wheel is probably gonna live for now in the garage, I'm basically gonna swing open the garage and be facing this. This is pretty much a 36 inch throat. It's gonna take a lot of material to actually go beyond what my throat capability is. However, pattern that I use to bolt this up is symmetrical. It'd be a lot easier if I didn't drop my hair down the gravel before I tried to show everybody. Anyways, I'm not going to tighten it up right now because this is not how I'm planning to use it, but you get the gist. Now, this tool post, it has four bolts in here as well. If I was to unbolt this right now and rotate it 90 degrees, tool post would bolt on 90 degrees as well. Um, that way I have the option of running it either way. It's 3 8 bolts, all I need is a 9 16 socket on a wrench um, or on a ratchet and I can swap both tool posts in about two minutes. Um, yeah, it makes this extremely versatile and with the range and height capability I have, if I decide I want to go to a smaller or a larger upper wheel, I can if I want to change out this for, say, a three or a four or a five inch wide wheel, all I'd have to do is build an upper anvil holder. Um, same thing with the lower, since all it is is a symmetrical pattern. I can put whatever wheels on this I want. Now, I mentioned in the comments and I mentioned it in the video and even a minute ago here, but uh, once I got started working on this, finishing up the design, I, uh, I realized I could make this a whole lot more versatile. And uh, on my way down island, I stopped in a Canadian Tire. They've got a bunch of air tools on clearance. So I picked up oh, the next one here. Uh, air hammer, short barrel. Um, I wasn't sure if the short barrel would help me, but it was on clearance for $16 Canadian, which is what, about two and a half bucks American. Um, it was on for, I think, 80% off. I uh, took it down to my buddy's shop and cut the handle off. And then I spun down part of the handle on the lathe. I left a boss for me to drill and tap for quarter inch pipe thread. And uh, cut a section of one and three quarter, 120 wall DOM, welded a sleeve on here. And uh, Kind of split up the middle and now what I have is a clamp. Now if I go onto Amazon I can get planishing uh, chisel hammer bits for the air hammer. They are a 10 millimeter shank, they fit directly in this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mount that attaches here on this particular air hammer. It has a threaded hole in the top and works out perfectly for my plan. 
because I can put a mount here. I can attach it through the top so it has something to butt up against. And this is going to mount here which is where the capability to move this so far up is so good because I can move it up to adjust. Now, there's actually a three inch hole through the plate here. So if I decide to run airlines internally, I can. Um, I found lower die kits, um, several radiuses. They are steel or tool steel, hardened tool steel. They have a one inch diameter round shank. So I have a peach, uh, piece of one and a half inch quarter wall DOM, about two inches long, which I am making a plate to bolt onto my lower tool post so that I can drop in lower anvils specifically for the planishing hammer in different radiuses. Or since I have access to a lathe, I can whip something up myself. Um, if I decide to go to a square lower post, I can build something similar to a uh, thumb die, shrinking die. Um, I've left my options open on this and that is the reason why. The beauty of this is I had designed a frame, you know, similar to a lot of what's on the market, similar to Carl over at Japan's Make It Custom, a um, few others that I've seen, but obviously his is on the market right now. Um, found another YouTube video where somebody cut up an air hammer and that's kind of my speed. No offense to any of the other guys, but I really wanted to do this one myself. Um, so the intention is, is the next trip down in a couple of weeks, I'm going to finish up my mount for my hammer. I found an air control pedal on Amazon for under 30 bucks. I found air control valves and all I need beyond the pedal, the control valves is a little bit of line in the air hammers, which are cheap. So uh, that's the next step. So I've actually got the clips and the dies now, and I'll be honest, the reason I didn't have these pins in or a die was dropped in with a bolt before is because I measured it with a tape measure and uh, I should have measured it with a micrometer and not in such a hurry because I'm so used to buying my steel American and everything's imperial that it never dawned on me that this upper pin right here is 20 mil and this lower pin is 10 mil so I made that 3 8 and I made that 3 quarter which is 19 mil and we were fitting it up right before we loaded it and realized it was undersized so I just put a carbide burr on my drill and clean that up clean that up with a file and well, the bearings all feel pretty good, pretty well polished. I mean, I'm impressed for the price. Uh, I think the upper was $150 with the pin and the five piece lower set was about 160 bucks. KMS does free delivery, so you know, it's really tough to beat that um, for that cost and if I find something I want more, I find something that works better or different or whatever, like I said before, if I have to change the upper anvil hole or, or the lower tool, tool post, I can change all of that. Obviously, I mean, it uh, doesn't take very much. With the Acme thread, it works out that every spin of the handle is 0.2 inches. There's five thread per inch. So I can change the height on this reasonably fast. There was absolutely no reason to go to a quick change post holder. I think they're a little gimmicky. Um, yeah, they probably do speed it up if it's built well enough, but the reality is, is the Chinese stuff on the market is built like crap. And I mean, anybody that builds anything, if you know those anvils cost me you know, just over 300 bucks. You can ballpark what I've got into this. And uh, let's just say it's definitely not the $5,000 US that a comparable tool goes for. And uh, there's a lot of labor into it and a lot of programming time. But realistically, since I can build it myself, there was absolutely no way to warrant that kind of money. For anybody that's watching, this is obviously built for me. I am right around 6'3". 
So I set this up at about a 38 inch working height. You know, most people build workbenches, 38 to 40 inches kind of thing. Realistically, now that I've got this in front of me and I'm standing there staring at it, I want to raise it up. But what I did is I intentionally built it at the lower height, thinking that I can raise it up some. The bottoms down here are uh, just open tube at the moment. When I go back down, I'm gonna cut some plates, cap the feet, and the plan is to actually put casters. I wanna put fixed casters on each of the rear legs. In the middle, I wanna swivel, and in the front, I want a swivel caster. Um, I want locks on everything, but I'm thinking a five inch tall caster, which is gonna raise this up about you know five, six inches and put my working height right about here, which is a lot more comfortable for me and uh, still usable for anybody else I want to show. For that matter, they can stand up on a milk crate if they have to. I'll show my kids. I've uh, offered to show some people around town if they want to learn. Um, but that's my intent. So this whole machine is going to go up another six inches or so. This is not a small tool. Um, I've been programming it. I knew exactly what the dimensions are, and it's still blows my mind a little bit now that it's out here but uh, I only wanted to do this once I wanted something that size was never a limiting factor um, somebody mentioned putting the adjuster up top I didn't for two reasons one because of the planishing hammer I wanted that end fixed and two because honestly I get the feeling I would smash my face into it because I really am that dumb sometimes um, that wheel's a little bit low, but in order to get the travel, that's where it needed to end up to fit all of my parameters. It's something I'm going to have to work around. It is low enough that I can literally dial it with my foot if I have to. Um, it'll be easier when there's knobs on there and I'm not getting my foot caught on the edges. i got to clean all that handle up more than anything, make sure there's nothing sharp. Weld some big steel ball bearings to the end of it. Um, give it something to grab. But... Uh, yeah, I think I covered all of the bases here. So I'm gonna grab some metal and I'm gonna show you how this moves some metal. Okay, so what we've got is a random piece of 18 gauge steel that I've kind of polished up and marked a center we don't wanna roll. We're gonna try and make her a bowl because she can use a bowl and she can't drive a car until she gets her license. So we're gonna test out this English wheel and see if we can't make some shape out of this thing with that.
So I'm a little bit rusty, but it'll come back quick and uh, you can see in a lot of shape pretty fast and uh, I'm using a fair bit of pressure and yeah I could have shaped it a little bit with a mallet on a bag but I wanted to see how much I could do with just the English wheels so we're gonna put some more time into it off the camera and see what we come back with. Well it's not a whole lot of time and there wasn't a specific shape in mind but uh, we have a bowl desktop makeup holder key holder type thing that is all hers and uh, she helped me make it and it was the first thing off the English wheel so she's the customer today she's happy with it so we're gonna call it good maybe get some stick on rubber feet for the bottom and uh, yeah it's gonna live on her dresser okay guys Thanks for uh, checking this out and taking a look at what I got going on here. Um, this is where I'm going to close it out today. Uh, finish up this video and, you know, prove that my English wheel works. And uh, I'm definitely going to be putting some video time in on it in the future. I'm going to start making some panels for the rear roof section of the rat, of the rat rod. And uh, we're going to start attaching that body to the frame and uh, patching up the roof, finishing it all up on the next episode. So uh, do me a favor, if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, it helped me out huge. Uh, like the video, drop a comment, give me some feedback. Um, you guys are gonna come along as I reteach myself to use the English wheel. I can make some pretty cool curves, but I'm definitely a little bit rusty and I'll see if I can uh, add some pointers along the way as I go for everybody that wants to learn while I'm relearning. So uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you on the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>